In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at event icons. And here I have several different tracks. I have a couple of different audio tracks, and in the center I have an instrument track. And if we take a look at the bottom left-hand corner of each of these events, we can see a different icon here. And actually, we have a total of 10 different icons that can show up in the bottom left corner of our events, depending on the action that we've taken. And before you click away from this video, because it may seem like a boring topic, I'd urge you to stick around because I have worked with students who have tried to accomplish certain things and they're not able to. And part of the reason is because they're not aware of what these icons mean and they've accidentally performed a certain action that's preventing them from doing what they'd like to do. So if you stick around, this can potentially save you a lot of time and headaches in the future. And while we go through the process of covering what each icon means, you'll then also learn how to achieve certain processes to your audio events, which could be really useful to you. So let's go ahead and switch over to a completely empty song here. And the first icon that we're gonna take a look at, which you have probably seen many, many times, and you may not even know what it means, is the gear icon. So here in my files tab, I have an audio file selected. This is a wave, and I'm just gonna go ahead and click and drag and bring this into our song. Let's shift E to make this larger, and we'll zoom out a little bit. So we can see here we have the gear icon. Now, what does this mean? This can mean one of three things or a couple of things at a time. So it could mean that time stretching has been applied to this audio event, which we didn't do. Uh, it could mean that this clip has a different sample rate than what our song has, or it can mean that the clip has been transposed or tuned. Now, in this particular instance, again, we haven't stretched it, we haven't tuned it or transposed it, so it must be the sample rate. And then if we come over to our browser with this file still selected, our back garden, this is back garden, we can see in the information panel down at the bottom, the sample rate for this audio file is 44.1. But our song sample rate here is 48 kilohertz. Now we can access our song settings by clicking on this 48 kilohertz one time, and we're taken to our song setup on the general tab, and we can see 48 kilohertz here. Now, if you have changed your, if you've customized this and you don't see the sample right here, you can always control comma to open up the options menu. In the bottom left-hand corner, we have song setup, and we can see our sample rate right here. Now take note of our gear icon. If I click on our sample rate and adjust that to 44.1, let's apply. Now we can see that gear icon has now been removed because our song sample rate is now at the same as the sample that we've brought in. But I'm gonna go ahead and change this back to 48. Let's apply. We can see that that gear icon has come back. And actually, I'm wrong. Let's put that back to 44.1, apply, okay. And then I'm gonna to come to the bottom right hand corner and I'm gonna hold down Alt, and if you notice our double arrows are gonna change, now we have a little clock. And so I'm gonna click, hold, and drag this, and this is gonna stretch this audio file. So now that it's being processed with that action, we can see our gear icon has come back. Let's go ahead and Control Z to undo, and then now I'm gonna right click, and here in the transpose field, I'm gonna put in two, so we're gonna transpose this by two semitones. So We'll go ahead and accept that, and we can see that the gear icon comes back. Okay, so now if you're seeing this, then you know that one of three or a couple of actions have been done to your audio file. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back to zero. And now we'll go ahead and change our sample rate back to 48. Let's apply, okay. Now the next icon is the mute icon. So I'm gonna click once to select this event, and I'm gonna press Shift and M. And then we can see we now have a little speaker icon with a slash through it. And this basically just means that this audio event has been muted here, so this is not gonna play back. And if I were to bring in another audio file, this mute function is gonna to apply to individual audio events. So we can, of course, mute our entire track here, so nothing on this track is gonna play back. But if we just like to mute particular events, maybe we're not sure if they fit in with our song, we can always mute them individually and then test it out without them, those playing back. Now, if I press six on the QWERTY keyboard, we'll notice we change to the mute tool here. And so while the mute tool is active, I can click on here to take that mute off. 
and I can use this to toggle on and off as well as the shift in M. Now the next thing we'll take a look at is time lock and let's remove this other event or actually let's just bring this down to another track. So if I right click on this track here, we have several different options here and one of them is time lock. So I'll go ahead and select this and just take note in the bottom left corner. Right now we have the gear icon, but as soon as I check that, we have another icon that pops up here. And with the time lock feature in, if I try to click hold and drag this to another location, it's not gonna allow me to do that. So if you have any events that you would like to keep them in their current position and be sure that they're protected from being moved, then you can engage the time lock. Let's take this off of our top one. Then the next we have is an edit lock and we can see its icon there. And with this engaged, we can move our event to a different location within the track but if we try to edit, I'll press three to switch to the split tool and I try to make cuts, we cannot do that. If I press four to come to the erase, we can't erase. And if we come to the mute, it's not gonna, you get the idea. We cannot perform any editing actions, although we still can move this event. Now, if I right click and choose time lock as well, notice our icon here for the edit lock, that's gonna change to a padlock because now we have time lock and edit lock engaged. So as you can imagine, we cannot move it. And if I switch to the split tool, we can't make cuts or any edits on this event. Let's go ahead and take these off. And we're just back to our gear icon. Now let's come down to our second track here and I'm going to hold control to switch to my split tool and let's just make a cut here and take a look at event effects icon. So this one now has the gear icon, just the same as the original that we split it from. But what if I'd like to add a, an effect to this one particular event that we've split? So I can right click on this and then here we have event effects. So I'm gonna come to the bottom here and choose to add effect and we'll just leave this on device and analog delay, we'll click okay. So now we have an analog delay that has been applied just to this one specific event. And we can see that effects icon here letting us know that that's been applied. Our original audio event that we split this from does not have that effect applied to it. So if we were to go ahead and play this back. So it's kind of hard to hear. Uh, there's really no transients in this piece here, but if we'd like to access the effect, then we can click on this effects icon and choose the analog delay. Let's take the dry wet up and these other settings for time and feedback and play this back again. Okay, so I just pour, I chose a poor example for this, but you get the idea. So. That's what this icon means. And you can again access the effect that you've added by clicking on that effects icon. Now also we can, while this event is selected by clicking once, if I open up the inspector, then we can see at the bottom here, we have render. So we can render that or print that effect to this audio event. And if I click on this arrow here, then we can expand out and see that we have the analog delay and I can double click here to open up the floating window for it and make adjustments to the parameters. Now, if I'd like to remove, then I can come here to the inspector and choose remove at the bottom. That will take our analog delay out. I can also click on the effects icon here and open up the window. We can then come to this downward facing arrow and remove this effect here. So now we can see that that effects icon has been removed from this audio event. Let's close out our inspector. And we'll come over to our browser again. Let's scroll up a bit. And I'm gonna bring in several drum sounds and just place these all on the same track. We'll close out that browser. Now, the next icon that we have is the chain icon. So again, we have several discrete audio events, drum sounds. If I were to click, hold and drag to select them all and press G as in good gracious. These are now all merged together and we can see a chain icon. 
So now these three, what were once discrete events, can be moved around as one. And what's really important to keep in mind about this feature is that if I would like to access the individual events within this merged event, I can double click to open up the editor and then we can see here, I can then make adjustments to each one. So if you take note of our merged event that is one here in our arrange view, as I come here and maybe say decrease the gain, then we can see we can make the adjustment here and that will be made within our merged event in the arrange view. But I'll go ahead and click on control, hold control and click on that handle to take it back to zero dB. And the next icon that we'll take a look at is the ghost icon. And this works in tandem with our merged events that we've just taken a look at. So if I were to press D as in dog and just duplicate this out, then we see we just have the chain icon letting us know that this is a merged event, but we'll delete that out. And this time I'm gonna hold shift and press D. And then now we can see not only with the chain, we have a ghost icon here. So that means that these merged events are gonna be linked together. So while this one is selected, we can come to the edit window below and I'll again make that same adjustment to the gain of this center event and just take note here for both of these, they're going to be affected. Okay, so maybe if I select the first event here and let's click hold and drag and create a fade in, then we can see that both of these events are being affected at the same time. Now, besides pressing Shift and D to create a shared duplicate event, we can also right click, and then we have duplicate shared here as well. Now let's close out our edit window. And the next icon is the folder icon. So this can be useful to show that we have tracks that are grouped into a folder track. So while this track is selected here, I'll hold Shift, let's select the top track. And then I'm gonna right click here in the track column. And then at the bottom we have pack folder. Okay, so now all of those tracks are packed within a folder and then we can see in the bottom left hand corner here of our folder track, we have this folder icon. And we can even see visually here the three tracks that are contained within here. So if I click on this folder icon here, then we expand those out. You can see our folder icon there. If I collapse the folder, then our several tracks are collapsed back within. Okay, let's go ahead and mute this folder track. And I'm gonna press T to add an audio track and then press enter. And this actually got grouped within our folder track. So I'm gonna right click on the folder track and just remove that. And here's our new track up at the top. Let's record arm this and come back to the beginning here. And I'm gonna come to our ruler and just click, hold and drag to set up a loop range here and press the forward slash to make that active. And I'm going to enter into record, check one, two, test, mic check, two, two, one, two, three. This is a test for our next icon. And I'll go ahead and stop the recording here with the space bar. And now we can see we have this, I call it a super hamburger button or maybe a double cheeseburger button. And what this is gonna indicate is that we have takes that we can choose from for this audio event because we set up our loop region and we recorded several takes. So now when I click on this, I can access any of those takes to play back. So if you have a particular section of a song that you're trying to get right, you can set a loop region and then just make sure the loop is active and keep recording that part or until you get it right, and then you can choose the take that you like the best by clicking on that super hamburger icon there. Now there's one other instance that will see this icon and I'm gonna shift W to zoom out vertically. Let's hold shift and select the bottom track and then we'll remove selected tracks and let's come to the browser, our instruments and I'm gonna bring in an impact, our drum machine we'll load up a random kit in here and we don't need this anymore. I'm gonna place, position our playback cursor there and 
hold shift and P, I'm sorry, control shift and P to enter a pattern. And this is gonna be different from a regular MIDI part because if I double click to add a MIDI part and double click on this, then we actually we are taken to the drum editor in the edit window, but this is gonna be different than the pattern because when we double click on our pattern, we're taken to the pattern editor. So I'm just gonna randomly add some uh, notes in here. Let's open up our inspector and we can see the notes that I added show up here in our pattern. But I'm gonna come here and under the variations, I'm gonna click on the plus to add another variations. We can see variation one is where I added these. I'll select version variation two. Let's add some other ones. We can see our part is empty here, but as soon as I click, hold and drag, we can now see that those have been added to this part. And we can see our super hamburger button here. So now when I click on this, we can choose between variation one or variation two. So if we've created some patterns and we're building out our arrangement for our beat, then at certain areas to create more interest in our song, we can use this to change the variations throughout the arrangement that we're doing. Okay, and so that covers all of the icons that you will encounter within Studio One, depending on what you're doing. I hope that this has been helpful. And if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one training to speed up your learning with Studio One, I do provide that over Zoom. So definitely, if you're interested, check out the description of this video or the pinned comment below. And otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial.